Hello friends, now which is Elton John's finest instrumental? He's known for writing great songs, but he's also known for writing great instrumentals. Well, we need some ground rules to start with, and I've decided I'm going to look at instrumentals from his 30 solo studio albums and related b-sides and outtakes. So, we need to decide to start with what is an instrumental. I'm going to go for recordings that are mainly instrumental, but might just have a few words with them as well. Now, one I thought about for a long time was Tonight from the Blue Moves album, which of course gives us about four minutes of instrumental, beautifully arranged with the orchestra there, and then Elton comes in. But that is a wholly formed song, um, and he sings for you know several minutes on that as well to fill out the whole seven minute track. So reluctantly, I decided not to include that, even though it is a wonderful piece of orchestration and a lovely tune. However, I have got 16 instrumentals to rank. Now, if you know of any others, please let me know. As I say, I haven't included any uh, musicals or film soundtracks because there's a lot of instrumentals going on there. Uh, and often they're developments of other tunes which Elton has written uh, as a song. Uh, but if you know of any others, please let me know, especially rare ones uh, that may have uh, slipped out on a B-side um, or some sort of rare collection. So at number 16, I'm going for Hashtag Dream 2, which comes from the Oceans Away album. Now, on here are three instrumentals, all of them very short, a couple of them only 30 or 40 seconds. They're, they're fairly inconsequential, they're little improvisations, but they're pleasant uh, little pieces of music that tend to link together the other tracks. Now, number 15, again, I've gone for something from Oceans Away. This is Dream Hashtag One, another little improvisation from Elton, only lasting 30 or 40 seconds, but would have been nice to have been developed into a three or four minute track. Some nice musical ideas on this, uh, and it blends together some of the other tracks uh, really effectively. Now, at number 14, we've got Fanfare. This is a little bit of electronic music that follows on from Carla Etude and precedes Chloe on the Fox album. It's a nice little bit of quirky music, perhaps picking up on some of the themes which we're going to see and hear in the Chloe song as well, which is a beautiful song. Um, it doesn't last for very long, fairly inconsequential, but it's a nice contrast to what's come before, which is that sort of wonderful, lush orchestral setting of Carla and Etude. At number 13, a real rarity this one, is Chock Ice Goes Mental, the B-side of I guess that's why they call it the blues. Now this is about sort of um, a uh, sort of barrel house piano, some really sort of uh, rock and roll boogie piano going on from Elton. Uh, almost, I think it's a complete piano solo this one. Very unusual, quite atmospheric and quite fun, um, and a really strange sounding piano this. You can imagine perhaps an upright piano that's been mic'd here. Uh, anyway, bit of fun this one. Right, number 12, get your football boots on because it's Elton's football song, Tactics. Um, this sounds like a theme tune for Match of the Day, something similar. Um, it starts off quite gentle, but then you get these very sort of heavy going synths coming in, uh, which definitely date it to around the time of the 21 at 33 album. So again, another deep cut, this one. Uh, it's a bit of fun. You know, you probably had uh, great enjoyment producing and writing this one. I'll just include a little bit more of that because you kind of see uh, where this is going. And you can imagine the opening credits there of the goals going in. Now, at number 11, I'm putting Highlander. Now, this um, was from 1986. It was an outtake from the Ice on Fire sessions, which became the B-side to Heartache All Over the World. Um, now, what we've got here is kind of a soundscape. We've got these kind of um, space age uh, chords um, uh, and those continue really throughout the song. There's not really a kind of hummable tune to this one, but it's one where you've got to sort of just sit back, let the music wash over you. Of course, there was a film called Highlander and there is a connection between Highlander and some of Elton's videos. Although as far as I know, this music wasn't actually used on the film. Now, number 10, we're going to the Single Man album and Reverie. Now, this is, again, just 50 to 55 seconds uh, of music. Very pleasant, very calm, and as the name suggests, it's dreamlike. I quite like it, actually. And again, it's another one of those that I'd have liked to have three or four minutes of. Uh, one of my favourite albums, of course, a Single Man. Lots of people seem to like that one. That's number 10.
And number nine, I'm going back to Oceans Away for Dream, hashtag three. Now, this is the longest of the three instrumentals on this. A little bit more to this one, more of an arrangement. Um, again, some interesting musical ideas going on there. Uh, lots of contrast to the other music on the album. So I quite enjoy this one. And again, we'd like to see and hear more of it. Uh, number eight, it's your star to four from the Blue Moves album. Um, this again sounds like um, the some theme tune of a TV quiz show, doesn't it? Something like that. Uh, it's very brief. It's written by Caleb Quay, actually. Um, some nice musical ideas here, and this probably was Elton's strongest album in terms of instrumentals. Now, number seven, a real rarity this one, the B-side of I'm Still Standing is a song called Earn While You Learn. Uh, now, this one runs to nearly seven minutes, or can do. Um, some quite sort of cute musical ideas on this. Lots of interesting um, key changes on this. It's lively. Uh, it's fun to listen to. Uh, and I say it's one of those which not many people know. And we've got a number six theme from a non-existent TV series. This is from Blue Moves, written by uh, Elton, of course. Um, was awarded a Best Instrumental Award in 1977. Um, again, it could have been the theme from an existent TV show, couldn't it? Um, and it only lasts 1 minute and 19 seconds, which is a bit of a shame, because there's lots going on there, the group working well together, some quite original musical ideas in here as well. So now we go to number 5, and this is The Man Who Never Died. This was Elton's tribute to John Lennon. Um, it was the B-side to wrap her up, but it took five years to emerge because, of course, Elton had also done with Bernie uh, the song Empty Garden, another tribute to um, John Lennon. Um, so um, it's very similar, I find, to Song for Guy, and that's a good thing as well, I think. It's built around these sort of short chord progressions. It gradually builds up. There's some synth backing in it. And then towards the end, we have those words, he's the man who never died. Um, so lots of good quality. It's a pleasant listen um, and is one of Elton's best instrumentals, I think. And number four, we're going back to the Fox. And as I said before, I'm separating our fanfare to have dealt with. But we have to have the magisterial Carla Etude. Now, this does comprise two pieces. Uh, and it, you can sort of hear the break in them slightly, but I'm going to treat it as one. Uh, there's a forward slash in there as well. Beautiful tunes, uh, wonderful orchestration as well here. I think it's James Newton Howard. Um, you know, Elton was at his height here in terms of creativity, just of tune alone. We don't even need any lyrics on this one or any voices. Um, it's so beautiful. Um, he did a concert later on in his career uh, with a full symphony orchestra, and they did this one. Um, it's just a great tune from a very classy album. So at number three, we're going back to Blue Moves for Out of the Blue. Uh, now this one um, was used as the theme to Top Gear for a while. I mean, three of them from that album could have been TV themes, couldn't they? It's pacey, it's inventive, um, it's a great listen. There's lots of energy going on in this track um, and it doesn't outstay its welcome at uh, six minutes. So um, a really uh, great track, this one, I think. Really enjoy this one. OK, so perhaps predictably the top two. Number two, I'm going for Song for Guy from A Single Man. I probably don't need to say too much about this track, uh, except it's a wonderful, simple melody that then gets developed. So we start just with the piano, then we get some percussion coming in, then we get some synth backing, and it builds up to a wonderful conclusion. And again, we don't get tired of it because it's pleasant to listen to. Just a few words coming in there, life is it everything or life isn't everything. I'm never quite sure what that is, um, but just a great classy recording. Well, we're going down to the cemetery for number one, of course. It had to be. It couldn't be anything other, I don't think, than funeral for a friend. It's got everything. It starts off with this eerie atmosphere, then these sort of funereal chords coming in, um, and uh, then you know the piano coming in, and it building up to this fantastic crescendo uh, before leading into Love Lies Bleeding, which of course is a separate song that does lead there. Um, just wonderfully creative, exciting writing, um, unorthodox writing as well. Who would have thought this would work as an opening track on an album? And as we know, one of the greatest albums of all time. So those are my 16 selections in order. 
please put yours below or if you haven't got time to do them all maybe just put your top three or top five instrumentals down there get a bit of a debate going and please alert me to any that I've missed I really would like to know uh, any instrumentals that I haven't considered I'll do a follow-up video with those notes that's it for now don't forget we're still standing <laughs>